Hi everyone, this is Paul from The Outdoor Adventure and today I figured I'd make some biltong or trail jerky. Now this version is a, a South African version, it's called biltong. It's a bit different from how they would traditionally make it. It has a very different flavor than regular beef jerky. It's a lot thicker and it's a bit softer so it won't keep as long but I think the, t the taste is a lot better. I prefer it on the trail. So let's look at the ingredients we're going to need. We're going to need uh, your meat, and this is cut thicker. It's about a centimeter or a third of an third of an inch, more or less. You've got salt, and this is a rougher salt. Some people use rock salt. This is a coarser salt. It's not quite as coarse as regular rock salt, but it serves a purpose. Then you're going to need although it says yogurt, this is actually brown sugar you'll need pepper it says cilantro but it's actually coriander, sorry this is ground coriander and then as far as liquids go this is Worcestershire sauce and apple cider vinegar now there is a recipe you can uh, use and I'm going to post it right alongside this uh, picture now um, if you want to pre-mix the ingredients but um, if you like to customize it like I do what you'll do is you'll just be alternating and put a bit of these on each layer as you put it in the the pan and then you're going to let it soak for uh, 12 hours or so alright so it's going to be done in layers so it'll be easy to remember you take your meat and you make a layer of it along the bottom of your pan Alright, now when you've done that, you want to start with your liquid ingredients and you want to make a layer of it. I'm just going to wash my hands and then put in this layer. Alright, so we start with the liquid ingredients, otherwise we'll wash off all the other ingredients. And just put a bit of vinegar on there. Put your Worcestershire sauce. And again, try it out, find out what you like and adjust the recipe as you, as you feel it's needed. Now I've put on the liquid ingredients list to work on the dry ones. You're going to want this uh, coriander. This is ground coriander. If you can't find it, well, get a coffee maker and grind it up yourself, or a co coffee uh, grinder, sorry. And put a good layer on there. I like a lot of coriander. Then your pepper. and then your salt and the salt is going to be used to pull out the blood and the moisture out of that meat help it cure and then brown sugar, this is a rougher brown sugar now as you add more and more of course it's this liquid is going to fill up and it's going to cover the sides of it but you don't have to add too much right now Alright, so here we are. I've uh, alternated the direction as I put it on top and some people put bicarbonated soda in between the layers as well um, but that really depends on the person. So I, I did repeated that process for each layer, alternating directions. It's ready, I'm just going to cover that up and put it in the fridge and I'm going to take it out tomorrow and you can either put it in a dehydrator or I'm going to show you how to do it with a, with a fire and a, a dry heat. All right. My wife reminded me to make one more point and that is to avoid as much fat on the meat as possible because the fat is going to go rancid. You're not going to dry this out completely, completely dry like you would regular beef jerky. It's just the, uh, the style of um, meat and the style of uh, making it. So try to get rid of all that fat as much as possible and choose a good cut like right now I've got sirloin tip is the is the recommendation I just gra grabbed a, what the equivalent of a fine or good quality meat is here in uh, in South America alright as you can see it's been over 12 hours instead of in a dehydrator which you do to one to four hours depends on how you like it and how thick the meat is I'm gonna put them over um, high above a, a charcoal barbecue um, I'll just show you a picture of that now I'm just cooking some steaks for lunch 
and this is it and what I've got up there is a rack which is high above it and I'm going to keep the heat low and because you're not really wanting to cook the meat as much as you want to dry it out and smoke it so I'm just going to put them on that rack above there and keep checking on the fire and uh, keep drying them out until it's still a bit pliable but but dry you don't want it any uh, wet and meaty you want it dry but still pliable so not overly dry I just put the meat up on top and we'll just watch it and see how it goes. We'll check on it every hour or so and a bit more frequently closer to the end just to see how it's going and make sure the fire is um, still uh, maintaining a low heat. You really want to get dry air and that's what the biggest uh, job of this is a bit of air movement from the fires, from the coals and heat and of course the smoke. All right. It's been almost four hours and it's doing pretty well so far. I've been adding coals and yeah, it's drying out as you can see. I'll give you a shot from the bottom. It's gotten a lot smaller as you'll probably note. And we'll just keep it going until it's dry enough. Where are we? All right, so they were in there for six and a half hours, and as you can see, they're done. They're still a bit moist, and that's great. Now, because it's a bit moister than regular beef jerky, what you're going to want to do is put them in a Ziploc bag with a paper towel and put them in the freezer. So it's best to do this a week or so before your hike, and then you can take it with you and not have any problems. So it's a great uh, homemade version of beef jerky. It doesn't have all the preservatives that you find in uh, store-bought stuff, and I think it tastes a lot better. Thank you.